All right, I am doing the shadow box or whatever, LED swap, retrofit, upgrade, whatever you want to call it on my Makita LS1219L. Um, I'm already like part way into this, so I'm gonna catch you up to speed with where I'm at. Essentially, your laser that comes in this is all up in here. You have to first remove this clip, which kind of like fit like that. And then there is a set screw. There's all these things down here, right? So this is the set screw that was allowing you to adjust the laser. You remove that. And then this screw fits through right in here. And you remove that. And then you need to remove, there are two screws on the top here. Right here and right here that you remove and then you use a flathead this kind of like clips over on each side right here it like clips over that little see how it goes that you use flathead to kind of pry that up and you remove this piece right here which fits into here which connects to the top of the laser which I think that piece is inside um, which is part of the adjustment so you remove all that, you clip this off, and you can kind of pull this thing up. Your laser is gonna be inside with this little glass piece or plastic glass wannabe thing that kind of fits down in here. And then all of this is off. This piece is like this. There's a screw here, like this. You take this screw out, pop this off, this comes out, you disconnect the laser here, and then you're pretty much where I'm at here um, with everything kind of ready to go. And now I'll take you inside and um, show you what I'm doing to the LED currently. I purchased both of the DC to DC um, boards that were in the recommendations. This is the one that fits easily. This is the one that requires some extra work. See there's a difference in length and width. They're similar, but they're definitely a little bit different. So I decided to just try this version first, the small one that fits easy, and see how con content I was with the brightness of the shadow. And if it's not bright enough, then I can go back and um, fix that with the other one. So this is the OEM piece that comes when you order it and this little clip here is normally attached here. The directions say to cut it off with about an inch left. So on the board here you can see it says in and it says out. The in is going to be the power from your switch. So what's coming from the saw. So I've cut this off at about an inch and I have soldered that on and now I'm going to solder this to the other side um, on the out. So you're gonna see how this kind of happens and works if you're unfamiliar with soldering. Uh, hopefully it don't make it look too, too difficult because it's really not real hard. Um, it's just a matter of getting things kind of lined up and then getting her down here. So let's see if I can. All right, so we'll just get a little bit on my soldering iron. And we're gonna dab it on there. And make sure that we've got a good connection to the tab. That should be good there. If you can see, there's plenty of solder 
both sides. Those are going to be good to go. All right, the next step says to attach the LED to the LED cover. <clears throat> this is the cover. You can see it kind of only fits in one way. There's a it's like a little fin down there. You can see this end's kind of split for it. Line that fin up. And then there's, if you look around here, you can see it's set up kind of to weave your wires through to avoid the, the hole here. And then it says to use a three by 10 screw. So that's snugged up. And now we're gonna move on to the next part. All right, so now it tells you to keep turning it until the brightness maxes out, then back off to get the lowest voltage to maintain that brightness level. If you're metering the voltage, this should be between 11 and 12 volts. So <clears throat> first things first, we will just turn it until we get it to come on and then we'll turn it up until it's max brightness and then we will back it off and see what we can get. So. I think that is going to be, it seems like it's the brightest. Let's get my, that's 11.55 right there. So that's pretty much, he said, between 11 and 12. So I'd say that's probably pretty much max right there. All right, so I think this is the better way to go about it. Get that into place and then you can slide that up. It's not going to go in there. And then you can slide that in after. So yeah, basically get your, get your top piece here, like clip down. Cause you got to get these clips right here to go into place. They're on both sides. You can see here. Um, and essentially, once you get those in, then you can push that up and you can kind of <clears throat> lightly pull up on this as you slide that in. And that's gonna allow that to go in a lot easier. If you try to put it on before, it just wants to fall down and it's a real pain in the, in the ass. So do that. That's gonna get it in place. It's kind of held in place right now, so it should be good. Um, you've got this, which goes like this, you gotta put that on. And then you've got this one, which goes here and there's a screw for that. And then there's two screws that go into here. I'm gonna wait to put those on until I get to these other plastic pieces on. So I'm gonna work that out real quick and then uh, we'll get this thing buttoned up. All right, I believe and we're probably done here. I've got the screws in on the top. This here, I'll probably try to clean it up a little bit, but honestly, like that little bit of gap in there, I is not gonna bother me. I don't want it to like break, but that's minimal to me, and I'm never gonna notice it after I start working. But there was a couple of little pieces on the inside that if I was to file them down, I could probably get this to be perfectly smooth. And to be completely honest, I might, I might go in and do that. We'll see. But I wanted to make sure I could get everything fit in good to start. And I've done that. So let me see if I can uh, fine tune this real quick. So there's those couple little protrusions, these little guys here. I'm going to try just removing the lower one first and see if that gives me enough room. Um, otherwise, I'll probably break off these upper ones here too, and that should give me everything I need to get in there and make it nice and flush. So let me do that real quick. So using just a pair of needle nose, I was able to get those things to pop right off. And by doing so, it now allows this thing to fit way better. So I'm going to do that route. That fits right in there. It's going to be nice and flush now. Um, 
and I'm way happier about that than I was before. So, um, really easy, quick thing. Make sure up here, I noticed that this wire wants to keep getting on top, and that was keeping that from being flush. So just make sure that that's running into the channel down there. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna put this thing back together real quick. I'll show you what it looks like now. All right, so we got it plugged in. We got our light switch here, and you can see we're good to go. Gaps up here are much better after removing those things. This is good. If this starts to bulge on you here, this is probably too tight. If you pull it down too much, it kind of like pushes this out. So just loosen that a little bit. Um, but as you can see, we've got our light. Um, and as we go down, we've got our, our shadow line. Um, it's not crazy bright. It's bright enough to see what you're doing though. We'll have to see. This is with some pretty bright shop lights that I have. Um, I forget they're 1600 lumen or something. So they're pretty bright. Um, definitely good enough that I can see where I'm going at least. We'll determine whether or not I want to try and fit that one in here or not. Um, it's pretty big comparatively and I don't know exactly. The e it's not gonna fit super easy is what I'm trying to get at here. So I'm not sure I'm convinced I want to do that right this minute. Um, probably try this and see how content I am with it uh, for a while, but we do indeed have a shadow line, as you can see. So, um, success has been had, I would say. At least I know that's going to be accurate with where I need to cut, whereas the laser kind of sucked, as everybody can agree. Um, yeah, otherwise I also did a modification for the exit here, exiting up top here on that OEM hose seemed pretty dumb to put that with this moving. Um, <clears throat> so I did a 3D print of this piece down here and then I did it, there was a modified one with a one and a half inch outlet and I did that because then I could just use a one and a half inch um, hose to couple these to the stock one and this and then Believe it or not, for inside this, a Gatorade cap from the small Gatorades is exactly the right size. So I'm just gonna spray paint that and I'm gonna call it good. And if I ever need to get it out for some reason, I can just bop it out. But literally all I did was just, uh, just pushed it in because it has a bit of a taper to it already. And it's perfect. So yeah, um, then I ran, I got a, this is a two and a half inch out to the one in, I think 1.75, or it's one, yeah, 1.825 maybe, I forget what the DeWalt hose is. And then I got the old Cyclone guy, and I got the 10 gallon one to match my shop vac. So I haven't used that yet. I just got that today and got it hooked up. So yeah, so pretty excited to start chopping some shit and uh, seeing how well the dust collection works and to be much happier with my shadow line here so anyway that's been uh that's been it hopefully you find this video helpful